What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to UAP Tuesday. It is our weekly show talking about the UAP phenomenon, all the news kind of summarized in one show. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, um, and it, it's really, there's really a, a ton of it when it comes down to the news of the potential of if the subcommittee or the uh, select committee, rather, is going to go into play. There's all of these. There's an interview, by the way, that um, Matt Laszlo did with Burleson, and there's a lot that's said there. Burleson has been a skeptic from the beginning, but he's one of the guys that is fighting to get this committee so there can be more investigation. He had a very long conversation with Matt Laszlo, and one of the things that you see in the topic is there's a lot of conversation that has been around Lou Elizondo. We've talked about Lou Elizondo and Lou Elizondo for having that article that came out in 2017, one of the main guys who leaked it. Inside of this article, um, it is hinted that Burleson had basically said, hey, there's been a lot of uh, say online that you're a PSYOP. What say you that that conversation had? He also said inside of this that he didn't necessarily trust Elizondo. I think some of the comments were taken out of context, but for the most part, that's what he was saying. There's some things about Grush and other things that he talked about, but it's all aimed on trying to get questions answered. And I think that that's one of the things that's becoming frustrating. I'm seeing it happen in general is that a lot of people, Lou Elizondo being one of them, January 2024, big news coming, big news coming. No, not so much. A lot of people wait until 2024. You see what happens. I know we're in March. I get it. I'm just saying that we're getting to a place where the skeptics are in the driver's seat because they can say, you can keep telling me so-and-so saw it and there's firsthand witnesses and there's all that, but what is it? What's happening? Where's the information? We got that jellyfish video, right? That was one of the things that, that dropped like in the end of last year or whenever it was. But there was talk that, well, it goes in the water, but that part got cut out. But it was still enough of a video to say, well, what is it? What is that thing? And the conversation started. I mean, we had conversations on this show in depth. One, one day, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Could be this, could be that. But speaking of that video, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, were the ones who released it. Now, one of the things said, by the way, that I didn't know but makes sense from a report is that every time Jeremy Corbell or George Knapp release something like this, the FBI is investigating them. And from what reports are saying is that they're really trying to go after them. We'll kind of dive into that and what kind of protection there is. Um, the, we talk about the entertainment portion, pop culture a lot in this channel when it's not Tuesday. Well, one of those shows that I've been watching lately is Three Body Problem, and it's on Netflix. It's relevant to this topic, and the cast of that show actually talk about aliens in general. You see what's going on in, in that show and how things pertain to. Now, as far as alien bodies go, Ryan Graves famously at that Mexican hearing, hearing, then they brought it out. He said, the second he brought, they, they brought those things out, I was like, oh, my God, I was shocked. Well, this video, uh, Jamie Musson said, I got video saying that we told him about them. They're, they're going to be there. And they, they did release video. He didn't seem happy that they were there. I'll tell you that. He said, don't shoot me anywhere near it. But it did seem like he knew that they were going to be there. Um, that's, that, that's that. There's more. There's tons of it. And I get to talk about it today with a returning Mark Riley, which is going to be a good conversation to have overall. And as you know, or maybe you don't know, we started a daily UAP news channel. It's down to earth with Christian Harloff. The channel's been up now. We're approaching 16,000 subscribers. We hope that you'll join us every day with an updated news story. Well, I say every day, Monday through Friday. And that's about it. So the main thing that's very important here as I say to ask questions, I say be a part of it, as I say be just a normal, if you're just a normal person here, not like in the community, we're not fighting with each other and doing all that. Let everybody else do that. That's not what this is about. This is about just to have conversations, whatever, whatever side you're on. If you're on the side of like, well, we need more answers. I'm a skeptic. I want to do this. I kind of believe there's a lot. Let's have the conversation here. 
because we're all learning. We're trying to unplug from the matrix in general and see what the hell's going on out there. So subscribe to the channel. Trying to get to 200,000 faster than we got to 100, but hit that button. If you're here, we have this kind of conversation every week on Tuesday. Hit the button. Do me a favor. Be part of it. And we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify on the Down to Earth Podcast feed for audio. So know that. That link is also in the description. All right. It's myself. It's Mark Riley. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It is the big thing. UAP Tuesday. It's me, Christian Harloff. Mark Yodius Riley returning from the underworld. Christian, I do believe in interdimensional beings because I see the folds in time because I, ha- I don't sleep anymore. Nope. That's the, you made this choice. I made this choice. I have a daughter now. You do. Congratulations on that, my Thank friend. You. Um, and now you are back on the show. You are here. I'm, I'm happy to be back, uh, and, and seeing all the things, uh, well, seen is a relative term. Yep. There was a lot going on while, while I was in the, uh, oh, tons. In, you know, dealing with, um, you know, bringing a life into this world. Um, and I can't believe it, but I am so happy to be here and uh, be back with you. And, uh, thanks to all that reached out. Yeah, uh, saying hi and wondering how I was doing. Well, congratulations for sure. We're glad to have Thank you back. You. And yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on, man. There was tons of it. And so much in the side of like one of the things I didn't really know a lot about as I had Admiral, um, I had both Darcy Weir, filmmaker, and Tim Gallaudet, a retired rear admiral, on the show last week. And there's a lot of conversation, a lot of coverage. A lot of people picked it up and saw about it and talked about it. Um, I wasn't that aware of the whole USO phenomenon at all. And then listening, watching that documentary, talking to Tim Gallaudet and Darcy about it, and the things that Tim Gallaudet told me was very interesting. And I think that it's one of these things where, but I'll tell you, dude, it's like you and I have been part of this, like the movie pop culture um, side, and we you've seen the kind of discourse in the community that's that's there. Yeah. Oh, it's already like just learning about this, the community here with it's like people going after each other and and like yeah. and I don't even just mean like like there's the there's the normal side of it where it's like, OK, you're a skeptic. I'm someone that's not, and I'm just not you, but I'm just saying in general, you, someone's a skeptic. Someone's a believer. They don't see eye to eye. It's like, OK, we'll have conversations about it, but people making attack videos on one another and going after each other. It's like I, it's like I'm too old for that drama shit now, dude. I'm just too I, old yeah. for it. It's like it's like, look, if you don't believe you don't believe if I believe I believe you, sh- you should ask all the questions you want. I'm going to ask all the questions that I want. And you just have a conversation about it because, like I said, I'm not trying. I'm not running around trying to prove anything. I'm just saying, hey, what? What's going on? Can someone tell me what's going on? It's the same thing that you do. And it's just so, it's like everybody, no matter what community it is, everybody's just pointing a finger at somebody to say, you're wrong. You're right. See, you're a dummy for believing it. No, you're an asshole for not. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's social media. I know. Just, I feel just the, the social media has turned into this thing. It's no matter what. I mean, you could just say the sky is blue today. I can go on X and go, sky is blue. I'm sure somebody would be offended. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's the darndest thing. Well, it's it's why it's why I like we always bring up the fact when we had our buddy DJ Woolridge on, who's a known skeptic, right? And like, I love having a conversation with him because we're never going to see eye to eye on it, but we have conversations and we talk about it and we talk through it. And I think that that's important. And I think even the stuff that we were, we're some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, when you see some of the comments that are made, it it is. And I understand this. I even said this on my, my, you know, we were doing the daily news on the Down to Earth channel. And I said it the other day. It's like, you can understand where we're at in this process where from last, and I'm not talking about from like the many, even starting from Roswell. I'm talking about from just last year. Just last year when that thing happened with Grush and he comes out and he has the conversation and the stuff that has been leading up, you're like, oh, well, everybody, when you got to that place with the Soul Foundation videos, and every, it's like, shit's coming. It's 2024 is going to be the start of, you're going to see some real proof, and it's going to be hard to deny now. Like, when, when they gutted the Schumer bill, it's like, okay, we're going to do this a hard way. And I said in the intro, I get it. It's March. But it's still a lot of the same, oh, uh, you'll see. Something's coming soon. We're going to do this. It's like, it's a process. It's, it's a, it's, you know, it's, 
it's not baby a steps. It's baby steps. And we, you know, there's been progress, but, uh, you know, it feels like it's, it's slow moving. It's slow. Know, it's and, slow moving. Yeah, it is. And it seems like, you know, there's a lot of like everybody's got an agenda. Everybody's got an agenda, whether it's the agenda and, and whether it's a good agenda or a bad agenda. Everybody has an agenda. The skeptics have an agenda and there are there. Are, I, th- I think there are good skeptics. I think there are skeptics out there saying, hey, I have asked so many different things. I'm trying to believe I believe the one point and I don't see it anymore. And I got to get the proof. I got to ask you a question. What is the answer? Does anyone have an answer? And then right. there's ones that just are trying to, to trying to stir the pot and then are just trying to be dickheads, you know? Yeah. And then on the opposite side of that, you get people who are, like I said, like understand that they can um, get people hopeful and they say certain things about whether it's, uh, you know, potential proof that they might have, things that they have seen, things that, and it's like, and they keep saying things to go, oh, yeah, yeah, but if you saw what I saw, and if I wish, and you were, and wait, just wait, just wait. And people go, oh, when are you going to see it? When are you going to see it? You're, and it's a, it's a crazy thing because in the overall grand scheme of things, and I think even the skeptics will tell you this, that if it came down to it and whatever it might be out there, and if, if, if you told the, a skeptic, hey, there we know for a fact, and I'm going to show you. This is the actual evidence that they're going to show, whatever it might be, whether it's aliens or a guy named Benny who's been who's been flying around in in some ship that that he figured out how to do it. They're going to release the Benny footage, right? The Benny footage. <laughs> and that skeptic goes, "Well, I saw it. Okay, well, look, I'm not going to tweet about this stuff anymore because you showed me the Benny footage. Now I know it's this guy named Benny." <laughs> so I want to meet Benny, right? But it's but it's just a matter of. You think you would think everybody would want to be on the same page. The question is that we're such a volatile society in general that, yeah. and I'm not just talking about the people that are trying been trying to cover things up and whether it's you know uh, other military footage stuff that we've been working on forever, actual uh, other dimensional beings, whatever the hell it is. You know that there's are people who have been actually trying to cover it up and don't want it out there because of what we've said because of the idea that there could be lawsuits. There's these other things. But I also think that there's this thing now where people don't want to be wrong because if somebody's out, if somebody's out there going on both sides, if people are out there going the whole time, no, this ain't real, this ain't real, no, no, you, you've been duped, everybody, you've been duped, and it turns out you haven't been duped, what are those people going to say? And then the vice versa, let's say it is another military. Let's say it is something else, and there's actual proof, and it comes out because they were not trying, they are trying to keep it quiet for so long, but they found out, or it was us, and we've had this stuff, with this technology for years upon years, and it comes out. What are the people who are going to say, well, no, it was, actually, it was actually other ships from other worlds? What are they going to say? No, 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 they're not telling the truth. It, I don't, yeah. it's, it's a tricky situation where I'm at right now. Yeah, uh, you know, this is the world we live in now. And I feel like that uh, I personally want to be able to be kind and have healthy discussions and go back and forth and listen and always listen. Just open your ears and, and, and just just try to get to the bottom of things in your own way research L- look at uh, both sides of things whatever it may be i think that's the only way that we can our our country is so divided we, we talk about it a lot um you know with whether you're you know somebody could say well i believe this and i'm a democrat you know then you have the other side that goes well i automatically disagree whatever it may be i want to believe that we can get on the same page just by being kind to one another and listening but to, right to never gonna happen speak, <laughs> it's never gonna happen it's yeah. just that it's not just, with social media i believe that's exactly I really right don't. i think it's i think it's just added this this layer of just totally you know where you're in the you're you're in your own little um echo chamber and you're trying to yell to be heard over your own self you know, and you're, it's you're sides are taken, this other dude. person across the internet will listen to you. And sides just keep getting taken. And it's like, and you look and what I've learned that that's why what I have said though, too, when it comes to it, because people I'll get, I'll get either, whether it's tweets or tags or something along the line or DMs or people going, Hey, this person said this, or this person said, I don't care. I don't care. I, the only reason, the only thing that I'm here for is to say so-and-so from Congress said this was going to happen 
Will it happen? So-and-so said that this is going on. What the hell is that? That sounds crazy to me. Like, I'm not trying to, 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 to break stories and, and, tell you, and tell you certain things where it's going to be like, oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Uh, I, 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 need, I need all the skeptics to realize that. Here I come. And then it's a, or, or the vice versa of going, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This guy said that he might not believe that this particular thing and he questioned it. So is he one of those guys? No. What did I tell you a million times? Here to ask questions. Here to ask what the hell is going on. That's why Riley and I started this thing to say yeah, we're, two, we're two regular guys wondering what the hell is going what's on. What's going on? What is it? And that's it. That's, that's it. it. What is going on? It's like, so do me a favor, everybody out there inside of this community in general, right? If you're like, well, so and so said this and so and so said that and this and then what's his stance? What's his stance? Leave me out of it. Leave, leave me out of it. Leave Riley out of it. Like, have a blast. Have some fun. We're going to be here talking about the stories that are going down, and we're going to ask questions because we're curious about this thing. It was a very interesting documentary that we saw overall with the um, UFOs exploring the unknown. I think it's fascinating in the stuff like Tim Gallaudet blew my mind last week, blew my mind in the stuff that he said and in, in the questions. And this is a, this is a decorated, uh, retired rear admiral inside of the and, – and just the stuff that he was saying overall listening to him. So – he had me very curious. You know, there's certain, it's just, I don't, I'm not going to pretend that I, I understand all this shit that is, I would do not watch it. Did you watch Three Body Problem yet? I'm probably not. No. So. I need to. I'm just so, it, it has a lot to do with quantum physics and a lot of these different things. And I'm so fascinated by all that stuff. I don't pretend. And even the, in even like Oppenheimer, when they're like, I don't know any of this stuff that you're talking about with quantum physics. It's just fascinating. I'm fascinated by it, and I want to learn more about it. And I think that this stuff is kind of linked to it, like when it comes to um, consciousness and and just there's just so much more. I'm fascinated by dreams. I'm fascinated by oh, yeah. uh, dimensions. I'm, fa I'm fascinated by all these things, the way time and space and it all works. And I all I'm, my personal belief is that it's all interlinked. And yeah. I'm I'm willing I'm willing and I'm listening to be proven that no, it's none of that. It's, 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 it, well, who did I say? What's the guy's name? Flying around on the ship? Oh, Benny. Benny. It's Benny. You guys don't realize that we're finally releasing the Benny footage. So shut yeah. up about other dimensions. This is one dimension. Just tell me. So I'm going to think what I think. I'm going to believe and have my thoughts of what I have read. I, I do believe it's very interesting and strange that every time these things are around nuclear facilities, things shut down. There's reports of it. That's where it happens. I think that. The amount of coverage, I believe in a lot of this stuff, and that's where I stand. And I know Riley, you're similar on this on the same stuff. Yeah, I mean, you brought up the like quantum physics, science. I think that science is is a gateway to a lot of this, and and you know that when when things are based in facts, you can learn so much. And I don't know if it's interdimensional. I don't know if it's little green men coming from Mars. I don't know if it's Benny flying around in a tic tac. It you know what what it comes down to is that I I do believe my worldview has changed a lot throughout this show because of discussing possible explanations for it, meaning that we can have a conversation whether it's about you know we watched that great video um, you know where we talked uh, hinted at you know could it be us in the future right time travel but I mean that's fascinating to consider mm -hmm. is it real is it true don't know. Is it fascinating to go down that rabbit hole and just have a conversation, you know, open your mind a bit? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like this thing. That. This is why this is why I say when it comes down to the skeptics, too, is because skeptics will do the same thing, the hypocritical thing, I think, a lot of times. They're so adamant that, no, it's not this. It's not this. They know. Okay, what is it? But but it's and it's it's even less about that as opposed to, yeah. like, I just can't. Well, they're so con convinced that it's not, that it's yeah. not. How do you know? Like, in the same way that I can't confidently say, like you just said, interdimensional beings, I just heard whether it's Luna or Grush or whoever it might be say these particular things, and I say in myself, it's a very interesting theory. And that would be because I don't know all the way how quantum physics works. I don't know how time and space works. I know that I'm, I'm fascinated by it, right? But I don't know. I can't say in the same way that I can't say definitely that it's not. Um, other other uh, country craft or our craft. Yeah. I can't confidently say that. I can say confidently that I don't think that, but I right. can't confidently say definitively that's, no, 
That's not what it is. Nobody's going to be able to change any of our opinions. And I mean, I think that's a, a, a big. Eventually, part of you can. Eventually, you can. If you show no, me that, footage, you there's can. Fact. I'm talking about right. if somebody yells at you online and says you're wrong. You know, they're not that that stance. Unless they bring something to the table, is not going to change my opinion. Right. You know what I mean? But if somebody goes, "Here's what I found," and blah 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 blah, oh, well, that could maybe change my opinion. You know, uh, I was completely off about. I was making a joke from defending your life, saying that we only use two percent of our brain, and I had thirty-seven people come at me on Twitter saying, "Actually, the studies have done this," and I'm like, "I did not know that." Right. It changed my way, my my way of thinking about it. The facts were presented to me and I went, oh, I was wrong. Yeah, don't don't yeah, come. That's that, that's yeah. the hubris of the 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 human condition, I believe, uh-huh. is that a lot of times you don't want to admit when you're wrong. And I think that is the way you learn and grow as a human being is by saying, I was wrong. Yeah. And also and don't now come I'm able to, to know what I'm what this means a lot better. Yeah. And also don't come to this show for hardcore facts. It's like it's <laughs> no. that's, that's what, are the, we, what are we scientists here? Well, yeah. It's like look I'm gonna read team stuffed animal behind. <laughs> My goal is to look at a is to look at a news article and talk about. Well, that's interesting that that guy said. What the hell does that mean? In the same yeah. way that if I'm scrolling through channels and I find a channel that I'm watching at Max, and then I switch over and I start watching the news, and then I turn to the person that I'm watching with, and I go, "Oh, that news story that just happened. Uh, did you see that they found out Benny's flying around in a ship? What'd you think about that?" Okay, now back to the old reruns of Friends, and it's and and <laughs> yeah, and so you either want that for to that type of show, and you watch this show because of that, or you go somewhere else and you watch the Jeremy Corbell and Naps of the World. You watch all these other shows, and that's where you're going to get those deep dives. So I want people to understand and realize that, and I think that's one of the reasons we resonated with people because for the most of the the hardcore enthusiasts, they're gonna, they want to come in and they want to see a regular person's point of view of it. The other um, people are just like, yeah, I didn't really know much about it. I'm just curious to hear about it, and I also like my imagination to go into places, and I like to theorize with you guys also. So please, if you stumble upon this show because you've seen a clip of it and you think all of a sudden, well, that person, you're wrong and stop believing because you're the wrong, you're in the wrong side of the camp. You've come to the wrong town. You've yeah, come man. to the wrong town. Um, so either way, there are a lot of stories that we are going to cover here today, Riley, and we're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's start with this one. All right. So this clip is from Burleson, who was talking to Matt Laszlo and asked a poll about a, a great many things. As Palpatine would say, but this was a uh, this particular thing. We've seen this. There's been comments on this show and many other things about Lou Elizondo about the fact, and I've seen it. Uh, we've done videos on Lou, and I, I get it at least four to ten times inside the comments that you know Lou's actually a psyop, which people are like we said before. They know how. I don't know. They have theories, but they're adamant that it's the case, whether it is or isn't. The the definitive. It is. Um, but Burleson actually asked him. Uh, Lou Elizondo. Here, here's that clip. Let me let me play this clip. I asked Lou Elizondo directly. Huh. I said, because there is a, there's, a, there's quite a few people on the Internet that, that believe that this is all a psyop and that they, they, the intelligence community and the Pentagon want to continue to float this idea that they, there, there are, you know, what if there are UAPs? What are we, you know, what if we might be facing an alien threat and therefore we need to spend more money we need to you know, build up the military industrial complex? It, it, it does, it does, it's a logical, um, it, it, you know, you can see why that might, might be a motivating factor. So I asked that directly to Lou Elizondo. Huh. I said, what do you say to anybody that, um, to, to some of the theories that you guys, because Lou, um, he's an interesting character. He didn't, um, he, you know, he worked in in the CIA. He was um, he was embedded in military operations, not so much UAPs. And before he was assigned that program, and I, I'm not sure. You know what I, what I'm saying is that I can see how it's a, it's a, um, how I can I I can see why people would have skepticism about, you know, whether or not he's legitimate and whether or not or or that he might be part of the psyop. 
to, to bolster more funds for the for the Department of Defense and for the Pentagon. All right. We uh, get... But Lou said that Lou said to me that that he would that that's a, that that they would not they would not do that because it would mean that they were lying to members of Congress and they don't want to go to jail. That was his response. Okay, so there's that clip, and I'll tell you, Riley. Look, it is, it's an, it's the th- even the Burleson says it himself, right? You can understand how someone could come up with that, and let's let's take the skeptic's point of view on this point, or on this, okay. right? All right, so this is a this is someone that we got to figure out how to get more funding because we're whether we're losing a grip, we have a lot that we can do. There's more money that needs to be spent on military, and someone goes. Listen, I can make a very compelling case from all the stuff that's been going on throughout these. We've done it in the past, and we've done all these things in the past in to be able to do this, to show enough investigation. I could leak this thing, and this would start a conversation about UAPs and UFOs, and we can eventually say, there's something. These things are not friendly. Let's get us to a place that we've never been before military-wise. And let's build it up. I can see. I can see a case now. Do I believe that? Yeah. I don't, because it's not just Lou Elizondo that's that's says these things from years upon years upon years of different groups and different places. It's not just him and four other people. It's countless amounts of people overall that have been that have, that have had these reports, have had these things, and um, and I also believe Lou's response there of like. We're gonna put ourselves on the line here and and tell Congress all this stuff and make it this much in the in the open and risk going to prison if 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 what you just said comes to light. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't buy that either. I, it's a psy up for saying it's a psy up. You know, it's 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 you could keep going back and forth by saying, okay, he's saying that I have all this information to get more money for the industrial military complex. That in itself could be a, a smokescreen as well. Um, I feel I, I, it's, it goes to your point, Christian. It goes to my own experience. There are so many of us out there that have seen st- things that you cannot explain. And now there is a groundswell of momentum and um, support. Uh, and you have David Grush, who changed everything for me, at least, coming out and saying, "Yeah, this is this is real." So. That's enough for me to keep digging and asking questions. And why would good people put their put their life on the line, put their reputations on the line um, by going out there and saying these things? I mean, you have uh, you know Ryan Graves. Why would you have uh, a military pilot go out there and uh, risk losing what he loves to do, which is flying? Well, I think the argument there, this. the argument there again, to take this this point of view, the argument there would be, well. Graves doesn't know what he saw. Like Graves could have seen one of these things inside of the program, whatever it is inside of this program, whatever it is that they're working on. Graves could have seen it doesn't and doesn't have access to the fact that these things are yeah right. So like I think that it's more so the like what with the people that are going with Lou Elizondo and other people who are part of it. And some people say Grush is part of it too. Yeah, which my personal as we just talked about as I did in my. T- 15-minute diatribe in the beginning of the freaking episode. Um, my personal thought and view is that, no, I am I am choosing to trust David Grush and what the things that he has said. And I do believe that there's a reason why Congress wants to bring him in. Did you – I know you've been at a commission for a little bit, but one of the things that Matt Laszlo also re- reported on was that they want to bring David Grush – working for the UAP caucus and working inside the government again to where his clearance would come back. Um, I don't feel, I mean, it, it's one of these things where it's just a little too convenient for it to just be a psyop. Plus the fact that if it is, if, if, if it was and people are onto it, it's like, it's the worst kept secret ever. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, well let's really investigate that because everybody knows that that's what it is now. Um, and let's get him under Congress now because there's so many people that are targeting Lou Elizondo. So many. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's get him under Congress. Let's get him, let's get him under, let's have him, have him say this because I know for a fact all this is BS. Let's get him under oath, put his ass in jail, right? Mm. And let me follow that up. 
if you know that Grush is part of the PSYOP, why is he not in jail? Right. Should be in jail. If he was in front of Congress, said that all these different things, he should be in jail. So if if he's yeah. lying, which doesn't seem like he is. You know, you've said many times, Christian, like, you know, the, the people that spread the uh, disinformation or, you know, are uh, putting it out there that, um, you know, this isn't real are better at it than, you know, the people that are claiming certain things. I mean, I think that this could be just another piece of that. You know, now throw it out there that 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 uh, Elizondo's uh, no good. You know that he's full of it and he's a psyop. Yeah. You know that adds to the disinformation and gets people talking, and then that sows division in. Um, you know what is, from my experience, has been a united kind of feeling of hey, we we want to know what's going on. Let's let's be together on this. Let's ask the questions. Let's be open minded. All these certain. Things. I felt that way too, Riley, for a bit. I mean, as far yeah. as like that, that's what I that was my perception of it, right? Too, and I yeah. certainly and I think from the people that are watching our show, it's pretty fair to say. But there's just there's there's a section and and again to reiterate, I, and we've always said this on this show, a- asking questions and being a skeptic is healthy. It's like yeah. you shouldn't just blindly believe anything, whether it's this subject or anything. You should always ask questions. It's that it's that same kind of like gotcha mentality. No matter what, like it's like almost like when there's when there's hate videos about anything in general. It's not about it's not about whether or not you could be right and we should come to it, but I want to give you my point of view. So let me be stronger on my point of view. And if you can convince me otherwise, then show me it's more. So no matter what you say, I'm going to show you that you're an asshole, no matter Mm -hmm. what, I'm going to show you you're an asshole and you're stupid and you're dumb. And you can tell me whatever you want to do. I'm going to tweet up because I'm going to make a career out of that. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. The outrage culture and the, and the, you know, negativity online, just, it, it kind of, it spreads faster than positivity and, and question asking and, and just, being a decent human yeah. being, maybe I don't know. Yeah, what it is, but, but that's, that's not all. And then, and that's not all skeptics. Either. There's a lot of skeptics that I see inside of this community that are just saying, "Hey, look, I used to believe. I don't believe it yeah. anymore. I need answers, and I don't believe it anymore." Now, depending on what who those people are, some of them just go, "Okay, I'm just not on board anymore." And one day, maybe if you show me what it is, I will. Um, then there's other ones going, "Oh no, I don't believe anymore." Now you shouldn't believe anymore. It's like no. Right. Like everybody, it's in the same reason that I was talking about this with Roka on my on, on the show today about Ghostbusters. You don't like the new Ghostbusters? Good. Tell me why. But don't tell yeah. me I shouldn't like it. I liked it. And but I like it. I I could. Maybe if, well, may, that's it. That's and, what that's what our, our culture is now online. Listen, it, answer you know? questions. Listen. Make your own opinions about it. Don't tell me what is it's like in the same way, look, I'm telling everybody. And like that watches this. I think everybody should ask questions and come up with your own and w- with your own answers in the same way of what we said. Look, you think you think that Lou Elizondo is a psyop, a part of a psyop? Why? Do you think it'd be just because you're a skeptic and you, that's that's the answer? Or have you done the research and you said, no, 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 wait a minute. I think more so if you really look down and you, see, and you look at this information, you look at this, you look at what he said here, little convenient to say this, 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 and you have like a full report and you've done your research in the same way that we always talk about like the O'Hare incident, right? It's like, how right. much do you know about that before you just say, oh, no, 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 none of those things flying around is real. Nobody had these reports, the, the, you know, the, the FAA would know about it, all this stuff, they would know about it. And then you listen to the reports and they go, oh, at first they said, no, 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 there was no report. Uh, just kidding. Yeah, there was. It's, it's like okay. you got to do the research on it and you got to have conversations about it. So this was a, and, and I also thought Burleson to me is someone, because you can tell he's, he's a skeptic, right? He's another one, but yeah. he wants the answers. He, yes, yeah, great. Yeah. He's not a skeptic. He's not a skeptic in a way of like, oh, no, not real. Let's, let's, there's some doucher they asked on, on, in Congress about who David Grush was. And he's like, uh, no, but something about David Grush, and he goes, who's that? You are the worst congressman or you're the worst person in government ever. If you don't even, I'm not telling you to believe it, but you don't know who it is. Even if you, if, even if you think it's a, if you're, if you're a skeptic, you're like, oh, that's the kook that said that there's uh, alien bodies. Of course, you know that name. Don't be a douche on the loose. That's what that yeah. guy is. A douche on the loose. That's- that's funny. That's well. That's uh, there's no gray anymore in our conversations and our and our d- debates and whatnot, and a lot of the online stuff that I hear is like kind of parroted from another source. It's somebody yelling and screaming in camera, and then somebody takes that as fact and yells at you yep. for it. 
you know, and that's, you know, you got to come up with your own point of view, your own, make your own opinion. So don't say what some person said and then tell me like it's fact, right? You know, just because I have a YouTube channel or something. No, you know, dig in, have fun. You know, the world is gray. There's a lot of colors in there. It's not black and white. Well, I always try to say that is it is not black and white. No, some things are. Well, this is why but that's nuance. There's nuance out there that social media just absolutely misses. Yeah. Well, look, Burleson also had more to say. And there's more things that he talked about. He talked about crush. He talked about some other things, and and he talked about the committee. And he and so Matt Laszlo doing a great job. Where they should check out Ask a Poll and and look at the stuff that he's broken. So many different things. Um, but you should check that out. But. We're going to move on to another one of those topics, but before we do, I'm very excited to tell you guys about both PXG, which I know Riley's very excited about, and Built. Let me tell you about both of them right now. Golfers, you know that PXG is on a mission to create the most high-quality, high-performance golf clubs in the game. Well, they're bringing the same passion for excellence to their new line of apparel. And I got to say, they nailed it. I told Riley about this. Riley lost his mind. Riley was in the depths of having a new baby, but he was able to get some golfing in. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And he loved it. He told me all about it. It was made with premium materials and technology designed for peak performance. These confidence-inspiring looks invite all-day play, taking you seamlessly from the course to the office to a night in the town. From golf trips to romantic getaways, these dynamic pieces add versatility and standout style to every event. PXG Apparel has something for everyone. Pants, polos, sweaters, hats, quarter zips, joggers, jackets, skirts, everything that you want. I got this hat and this shirt. Man, this shirt is slick. Love that shirt. It's my color, too. I like that. So they're really comfortable. You guys know I like my hats. I like my black hats, and I like this hat. It's very comfortable, and I dig it. You'll see me wearing it a lot. It's great because they're designed for the course. They block out the sun. It's very... It's just, it, this shirt is really comfortable and perfect for the course. You can even wear it out. I will have meetings with this. I'll go to breakfast with this. Elevate your style game on and off the course with the PXG Spring Summer 2024 collection. You got to head on over to pxg.com slash big thing. You got to use that code though, big thing at checkout to save 10% on all apparel. All of my golfing friends are losing their minds with this stuff and they're all asking me for stuff already. That's pxg.com slash big thing. Got to use that code big thing to save 10% on apparel. pxg.com slash big thing. Use that code big thing. All right, you know what stinks? When you're stuck in a loop of rent payments, you're just watching your money vanish into thin air. It's the worst. It's time to turn the rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. How do you do that? That is where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program and it hooks you up with points on your rent. Doesn't matter, even if you're rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards, it's got your back. They're gonna mail the check for you. It's like basically having a personal rent paying assistant. It's the best. Every month you pay your rent and you watch the points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation, put your points towards a flight or a hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash big thing. That is join B-I-L-T.com slash big thing. All right. So thank you to our friends over at PXG and Built. The links are in the description. I'm so excited and so happy that so many people have reached out and said, hey, I love what you're doing over there. I love the show, and I want to support you. How do you do it? I mean, of course, you can join the Patreon, but what I always say is as well, or if you, in general, like, hey, get something for yourself. Get something good. Go and check it out. Check out our sponsors. So I always put our links of our sponsors in the uh, comments and, and in the description, and I always pin it as the top comment. All right, let's jump back to this, um, this interview here with Burleson. All right, we're going to stick with the skeptic's point of view here and staying with um, with a question that a viewer from Ask a Poll asked Burleson about Lou Elizondo. And here is the actual, uh, here's actually the actual video clip. All right, thank you to Skyfire News for clipping out some of this stuff. Here's the, um, here is the clip. Floor is yours. Hi there, Con- Congressman. This is Steve Green here with the New York Post. Can you hear me? Con- Hi, how are you? Yep. What are you doing to make sure that you are not being purposely misled by some of these characters like Lou Elizondo, whose claims have been debunked? 
Right. I don't believe. I don't believe hardly anything that they tell me. This is why I was I was pretty blunt at the beginning of all of this. Uh, I'm from Missouri. Missouri. You're going to have to show me. So I do think it is. Um, what I can say is that it has been validated to me that there there is over compartmentalization. It's been validated by the office of inspect both offices of Inspector General that that uh, many of Russia's claims. Uh, while they while they can't verify his claims about aliens, that many of his claims about the processes and the way in which information is not being conveyed to Congress has been validated, and that to me is enough to as a as someone that that is uh, trying to do the due diligence of representing the taxpayers and taxpayer funds. Um, I think I, I owe it to the American people to be responsible to, to follow through. Okay. So that's uh, obviously Stephen Greenstreet, who's a known skeptic, who is asked, you know, is he right away says doesn't give specifics on the stuff that is of the claims that have been debunked. But nonetheless, I liked the answer. What he, what he said there, but let's, he, what he, well, the one thing he said, he was saying, well, I don't trust what anybody tells me right away. I got to do the research on that, and that stuff too, which is fair. That's great. Yeah, it's fair. And the thing he said about Grush was like, look, we can't say for sure that all these claims about the bodies and that hasn't been proven, but his other stuff, the process and all that stuff, it's been validated. So that to me is a reason why I want to investigate this thing. And that's the type of bipartisan stuff that you need working for this particular thing. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's the kind of conversation that you want to have with someone saying, look, we, let's find out what these answers really are. That's what it seems like. And so, to me, that is the exact the epitome of what we were talking about is what this guy is saying right now is I was a, I'm a skeptic. I don't really believe in a lot of the stuff, but I do know somebody's lying about something. And right. there needs to be something done to show it. To he, you remember, you and I have said this, Riley, on this show a billion times. If it just, if if the noise gets so loud of like, well, they say that there's this, they say that there's this, they say that there's this. Well, then shut them up and show them either there is or there isn't. And that's what this guy seems to be wanting to do. Yeah, but it, it, like it, we've said it so many times, Christian. You're right. It's like how many times if it's China flying around because they invented some tic tac that can go the speed of light. Great, tell us. You know, uh, d disclosure is what most th that we are asking for. Um, and, and you know, that kind of stuff, I, I'm somewhat of a skeptic myself until it, it's, you know, I want to believe in so much. There have been news reports. I mean, the, the, the mall in Miami was, was one that really stands out to me as one where it's like, these are aliens. They come, they came down there. Why is there so many people? And we were like, I don't really believe that but I'm, we're open to it but come on it's like it, it, there is a level of skepticism in everything that we are talking about but i believe that i have an open mind and i want to i want to know and i want to dig in and get to the bottom of things and that's what i like about this answer you know he even said i'm from missouri we, we, this is how we do it yeah you know? and, and he I said like it at that. the hearings he said at the hearings you know it's like he he is always he's the one guy he's the type of guy you want on that panel because there's there's the gung ho people that are just like b believe in one way or another, and then there's like, look, I don't know, I don't think I believe in this stuff, but I know something stinks, and yeah. I got to figure it out. And so that's why I think it's good that it, what he's saying out there, as far as what he's doing now, as far as the other stuff goes, when it comes to, um, I think that you'll get people that will use this certain quote of like, well, he says he doesn't trust Lou Elizondo. He says he doesn't listen to believe anything anyone tells him because he wants to do the research before anything comes comes through. Before it's it's not it's wasn't aimed at one particular person. He's going, I don't believe anything people tell me. He's like, I gotta I gotta I gotta do the research on it. I gotta see. Um, that's, the, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah, thinking about it now, that is the, absolutely what everybody should do. If you d don't believe it until you do your own research and yeah. come up with your own point of view. Right. Do your research. That's it. Do your research. So, all right. That's, there's a lot more to that interview and there's a lot more. There's a good breakdown, I think, from a lot. You, the, the UFO Joe breaks it down really well on his Twitter. You should, you should look there. Um, there's, other, there's other people who, who broke it down, but you can just go to Ask a Poll and, and watch Matt Laszlo's interview right now. It's up. Um, this tweet is something that I wanted to show about uh, both Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, which I thought was interesting. All right, this is from David Haith. Now, I don't know David that well, but, um, but he says, 
Every time Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp release a UFO video, the FBI launches an investigation into them, said researcher Chris Sharp on his podcast. He said, there are some hostile people, let's say, who want to get them in jail. It is very, very serious. They're protected by the shield laws and freedom of speech, but people are trying to get them in trouble. He added that there are lots of people making threats against Jeremy. He said, if I was Jeremy, if I was sitting on those videos, I don't think I'd be brave enough to release them. It's great. We've got someone with balls like that. Okay. So this goes back to, you know, where I start to jump away from the skeptical's, skeptic's point of view and say, well, why in the world are people getting so, are they investigating so much if it's a nothing to see here, if it's balloons, first of all. Right. Now, the argument against what I just said could be like, well, he's releasing military footage of stuff that is programs that we're testing, and they don't want that stuff out. I, I get it. Doesn't seem like that's the case, though. Um, but I get it. That's a particular answer, and, you know, it's a debate that could be had. But I think it puts the balloon thing to rest. Why, if it's balloons, why does the FBI care? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the first thing that comes out. It's like, well, why do they care then? Right. That's always what it is. It's like, well, there's nothing to see here. Then tell us what it is. Ah, balloons. Well, the, the, Jeremy Corbell, um, now they released the jellyfish and the FBI is investigating them. That's the, that's serious then. Yeah, I believe that. I completely believe that, that this could be something that the FBI is like looking into it because I believe there's something out there. Yeah. I believe that there's stuff that there are, the government is hiding. This only adds to that for me. That ad, adds a level of uh, credibility um, on what their people are saying and trying to do with disclosure and getting this out there. And that if that is true, it's not something like, oh, you better stop releasing these videos. The FBI is pissed. About what? Then, then the FBI should go up to Cor Corbell and Natman go knock on the door and go, you just released highly sensitive classified right. Um, footage of a test that the U.S. government did. Maybe they wouldn't tell them that. I mean, I suppose they 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 maybe wouldn't, but at least they would know. But then, how is it on Twitter? Well, it does seem like they want to shut him up. And look, I, I think this is old oh, yeah. hat. I think this is old hat to George Knapp. I mean, he's been doing this for for a long time. So yeah, um, it doesn't make it doesn't doesn't surprise me. I should say that. The question is, though, as they said, if, if there's this other video, maybe and maybe that's another thing that we always talk about on this show, on a lot of different shows, on Twitter. It's just like, well, just release what you have. It might not be that easy, you know, in, in the fact that like, well, yeah, if we do, what does that mean legally for us if we right. release th this particular thing? What does that what does that mean? What if it's leaked anonymously? Right. In the same way that um that I think originally that. Because it was it was Chris Mellon and uh, and Lou Elizondo who helped leak that footage from 2017. But like, w w that's that's what you need again inside of this. Because had Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp received, and maybe they did, but it didn't seem like they did receive the full footage of that of let's say the actual full footage was the jellyfish going to the water, popping back out. That's kind of a case closed thing, I think, if it's clear enough. Right. Right. Sure. Um, but it's not. So you right away, you then you rightfully so have skeptics be able to say, well, it's balloons. So I saw other things like it's a smudge. It's this. It's bird, it's, it's bird poop. It's whatever it might be. Right. Exactly. But they have the right to say that because, well, but but someone goes, no, 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 but it goes in the water and pops up. Oh, OK, let me keep watching. Oh, no, no, it's 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 not. You can't. You can't. No, we don't have that. We don't, we don't have that part. It's like, oh, you can also. Well, then at that point, I could also say, yeah, well, right afterwards, eight aliens came in and started playing chess. <laughs> well, where is yeah. it? Well, we don't have that. Five minutes later, Benny flew by ben, in yeah. his Tic Tac. Yeah, and that's it. That's why they don't show it, because they knew that if Benny shows up and he starts waving in a Disney hat, and he's like, it's me, I'm here. And <laughs> and then, oh, it is Benny. We, we, we finally proven it as Benny flying around the ship. But it doesn't change the fact that these guys have stuff. And again, I'm not, I'm not in what... Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp have reported on incredible stuff, and they very well might have. My point of all of this is they might have that footage that we're talking about, but they can't release it because the source asked them not to. Right. Um, they maybe are in talks to get that footage, but whoever did was scared out of their freaking minds to give it to them in the first place and don't want to be like they don't want to be caught. They, 
you can guarantee your ass that if the FBI is investigating them, then they're certainly trying to find out who gave it to them. Right. Right. So like that's that's so there's too much. There's a lot to it besides it being easy enough to say, well, they don't have the water footage. Well, there might also be other things in it, but it doesn't change the fact that there's no water footage. So it's harder to, to believe for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, it's always that it's always that thing with some of this uh, conversations that we have it's like you know you can sit there and you can go i mean i went back and forth for for weeks over the jellyfish video two you weeks know? two we two weeks and uh you know if there was that final bit of footage of it going in the water and then launching out of the water i might have felt differently you know uh, but i implore everybody to go and listen to their own uh, podcast about how they broke it down what they do how they uh, vet these videos, you know, they were, they were discussing in a way that, that was very interesting to me, you yeah. know, and, and that's what you do with, with certain things. Now I want to see the, the, it going into the water because I still have my doubts. I do. Sure. Right. Do I believe there was something, you know, there's so many, there's so much smoke in all of this, right. That it just always, it's just that very simple thing. There is so much smoke out there. I'm wondering what's going on. That's why, to me, it's not. It's just it. it the psyop, the psyop thing, just doesn't play for me because it's just been. It's just yeah. been just too many people involved in it over the course of it's 80, 80, 70, 80 years, whatever it might be. That unless you know, again, the the argument against it is yeah, and every time they get more military funding. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just seems like there's a lot more going on, but it does prove to me anyway how crucial um new hearings not only will be, but how crucial the witnesses that they bring in have to be. Yeah. Like they have to be. And they got to get people under oath that have been talking forever. They got I mean, I when I talked to Tim Gallaudet on the show last week, right? I asked him point blank. I said if they asked you to testify, would you? He didn't even hesitate. Within seconds, he said, absolutely. That's like, what we need. Yeah, and like that's, that's the kind that. of stuff we need. Yeah, and and there again, there are so many people out there, and I, I keep tipping my hat to it. I am one of them that has had my own experience that I can't explain. That is something up there in the sky that did things that shouldn't be real, that shouldn't have that type of, I mean, unless it's something, you know, that's why I'm interested in disclosure. That's why I'm interested in people saying I will, I will go in front of the Senate and and testify. Yep. It's because there are there are things that have happened. There are so many stories. If you listen to them, that that is essentially the smoke we're talking about. Then what's where's the fire? And there are like oh nothing here. It's just a balloon. Right. You know. And I uh, we're beyond that. There, there's, there's something out there. I saw something. There are people that have seen things, and there are people that are now saying this is this, this is that, this is maybe this. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's a lot. Um, ask the questions. Ask the questions. And so we have quite a few. We have a couple more. to be a little bit of a longer show today. We have a couple more um, stories to bring to you today. And there's, hell, man, talking about what we were just talking about here with asking more questions, but as far as more people um being able to investigate without having pushback in the way that, say, Jeremy Corbell and, and George Knapp are. There's, there's conversations that are being had there. There's that whole kind of controversy that happened with Ryan Graves and the bodies and that and more. So we're going to get to that. But before we do, I do want to tell you about two of our sponsors, and that's both Magic Spoon and Miracle. Very excited to talk, tell you about both of them because... Yeah, I've been raving about Magic Spoon, and then I just started hearing about Miracle. I've been using them uh, for, for my sheets, and I, you'll love it. Here it is. I'm going to tell you, first of all, about Magic Spoon, because you guys know, and I, I got that yesterday. I'm so excited for somebody to reach out to me yesterday and tell me how much they're loving Magic Spoon. And, like, I'm so glad that you told me about Magic Spoon because I absolutely love it, and I'm so glad that you do because I – last night I got the new uh, – they have, like, honey gram ones now, which is great. Because I, I had a New Year's resolution to cut back on sugar, add more protein. I did it. And people love cereal. You get older, it's harder to do that. 
for just because there's so much sugar and kind of empty carbs. Well, Magic Spoon has everything. It's got the flavor that you love. It's got high protein, less sugar. They have cocoa. They have fruity, frosted peanut butter. I told you, I just had this graham, new graham cracker thing that I love. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only 140 calories a serving. So good. High protein. Uh, and, and zero sugar. It's amazing. If you go to magicspoon.com slash big thing and you grab a variety pack and you try it today, but you got to use our promo code, use big thing at checkout and you save $5 off your order. It's so, so amazing. They're so confident in it, by the way, and they should be. It's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they refund your money. No questions asked. So start your new protein diet today here with this stuff. It's a delicious bowl of high protein cereal. You go to magicspoon.com slash big thing. Use that code, big thing. Okay, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys that I'm super pumped about. So I've told you guys I'm moving and I'm leaving, going to New York, I'm excited about it. And we need new things for the house. Well, Miracle Made, so if you, if you, I'm not sure if you know, but if you were familiar with, maybe you didn't know this, your temperature at night, it can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality. If you wake up too hot, too cold, I recommend that you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. They're inspired by NASA. Yeah, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night. It's so good at self cooling properties for better quality sleep. It's the future, guys. Silver infused fabric inspired by NASA. So good. Self-cleaning. These sheets are infused with, with, with silver that prevent up to 99.7 of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. It's designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go try Miracle dot com slash big thing and you try one of those sheets today whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one if you order them today you can save over 40 percent. and if you use that code big thing at checkout you're going to get three free towels and save an extra 20 percent. miracle is also super confident in their product it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you're not 100 percent satisfied you're going to get a full refund Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash big thing and use that code big thing to claim your three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Thank you to Miracle Made for sponsoring this episode. All right. Thank you to our friends both at Magic Spoon and Miracle Man. Oh, man. I am glad that they're both part of the show. And as I've told you before, if you want to support the show and you can, hey, I like what you guys are doing over there and I really want you to keep doing it. How can I help? Get yourself something. That's it. It's that easy. Get yourself something. Use one of our use our codes. Use one of our links. That helps our show, and you get yourself something in the process. Okay. All right, Riley. So another thing here, News Nation was talking with um, Congressman from Wisconsin, and he was talking about hearings, about the more hearings in UFOs, about reporting without fear with UAPs. I feel. Like I feel like this is an older interview, but it might be it might be brand new. This is a clip out that we got from Skyfire. Here it is. Well, in the past, people could never be sure if there'd be revenge taken at him, if they'd be quite frankly referred to as crazy for imagining something like this. So now we're saying not only pilots, but air maintenance people, flight attendants, anybody else, air traffic controllers, can report these phenomena without having people without worrying that revenge is going to be taken on them. And quite frankly, it was a problem in the past because some people who just didn't believe in them thought that it might show that you have a mental problem. But you look at what you have there up on the screen. Is it important that the Department of Defense look into this and see exactly if there's any possible explanation for what's going on here? Yeah, and, and you, you're talking about potential retaliation. Did you hear any specific stories or testimony from people who say- No, but they... we, we certainly heard that people are afraid of speaking out. We heard that from the pilots who, who saw things both over the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. If a commercial airline pilot sees something they can't explain, under this bill, they can report it to the FAA, and then what happens from there? Well, they have to investigate it, see if they can find an explanation. It's important to be done on a timely basis, which I think, quite frankly, sometimes in the past was not done. Or even worse, uh, air personnel were even afraid to report it in the first place or fear the people would say oh yeah there's joe you know who, who knows what he's imagining 
How does one ensure that the FAA's investigation will be rigorous, that it won't simply be written off as a weather phenomenon like in the past? Well, first of all, we have the Inspector General, which overlooks all government agencies. They'll be looking into this. And I think the public sentiment after we held these hearings is such that it's something Congress is going to, or at least the head of the committee that I'm on, is going to look into every couple of years. Can I ask, what do you think these objects are? Human-made, something more? Do you have any opinion? Well, it could be anything, right? Uh, obviously, it's nothing that we're being told about. Is it something our Department of Defense or the military of other countries have developed? Who knows? We are going to have some more private briefings on this topic, and we'll see if we can learn a little bit more at that time. I know you heard testimony from several officials in that July hearing on UFOs. What did people describe? What was the reaction? Well, it was, uh, the public clearly feels we're not being told enough. I mean, I hold a hearing every couple of weeks. There are several hearings every day in Congress. And I'll tell you, I can't think of a hearing that I have chaired, a subcommittee hearing, that has received so much interest. As I go around my district again and again, I hear more questions from people and people coming up to me with their own tales of hearing of UFOs or unidentified phenomena. All right, I'm pretty sure it was an older clip. I feel like we even covered that clip on this show before, Riley, but it doesn't change the fact that what's interesting about it is if it indeed did get passed, if it indeed is something that that's one of the things that, and I can good transition into then talking about Ryan Graves in a second, but it's, uh, yeah. it's the idea that it would lead to if all of these things fall into place. And I think even if you're a skeptic, you want this stuff to happen because if you want someone like Burleson who's, who's talking about being a skeptic and asking these questions, you want him to be the guy in there, like part of this stuff, asking in the same way that Stephen Greenstreet said, Hey, well, you know, are you gonna what are you gonna say say if someone like Lou Elizondo tells you this or somebody else does this, what are you gonna do? And he's like, Well, that's why I'm on the thing. I'm trying I'm here to ask questions, right? And in the same way that you want a bill like this put into place to say, Well, okay, fine. You don't think that it's this? And as they asked him at the end, it was a great answer. He's like, what do you think it is? I don't know what it is. I have no idea. It could be this, could be that. But we do know they ain't telling us the truth. Um, yeah. And that's what we need. That's the reason why we started doing this show. That's the reason when you ask, it's the same thing that Tim Tim Burchett, who, who we know that every time he gives an answer, he's going to say dynamic or he's going to have something <laughs> great to say. But he's got he's got right. like a, he's got like his pocket answers, and one of his main answers that he always says he goes not about little green men. It's not about this. It's about where's all that money going from the spending, and that's the kind of question yeah. you should be asking. Where's that money going? Like, and and that's the other thing is why should pilots, if they see something flying around in the sky, be nervous to report it or look upon like they're lunatics or like they should be able to report it. Hey, guess what I saw? And I thought it was a great question by the reporters. How the hell do you know? That arrow is going to take it seriously. And I think the only reason that I bring up, not the only reason, but one of the reasons I bring up that this is an older report is it's before that cockamamie arrow report came out um, last week or two weeks ago. So does it, do you have faith in the fact that arrow will actually look up to it? Or are they just an agent of, you know, the same company that's been covering this thing up for years? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's always a good thing when I hear that there's a bill that will protect people from retaliation because there are so many times the pilots have seen something and they don't want to get involved. Right. They don't want to lose their license. They don't want to stop flying. They don't want to be called crazy, whatever it may be. Um, retaliation, I think, is a great way to put it. So it, the more the more information we have or the more people that have their own experience – We'll just continue to push this where you can then have people, you know, like this report saying, um, it's like, I don't know what it is, but I know that people are lying to us. You know, we want that. The more people are asking questions, the better this is, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on now and let's get to this Jamie Musson thing. Like, I don't, Riley, did you, there's two things that happen. And this is the other thing that I think that should be discussed also is that, yeah. Um, the first is that, you know they had this LA event about a week ago. Did you know this? Uh, yeah, I I heard about it. Yeah, it, it, and there were two things that, in my opinion, didn't go well. And okay. it's this: the sound was all out, and it was like it would just it didn't. If you're trying 
to put and there's two things. There's two that that I felt you're trying to put together. You're in a place now that the the push for UAP disclosure is the strongest it's ever been. Right. Ever been. And it's the it's still taboo, but it's not even close to as taboo. And the fact that if you and I would have done a show like this four or five years ago, people would have thought we were complete and other utter lunatics and might as well be doing a show about, you know, um, whatever it might be. And nothing against people who believe in Bigfoot and aliens, uh, Bigfoot and uh, and whatever, fairies and, and, and Santa Claus, Santa Claus, whatever. whatever. Um, so it's changed now. Yeah. The bodies at the Mexican hearings got a lot of people still doing the. I don't know what that is. I don't know. And then we'll talk about the Ryan Graves thing in a second. But this new thing, I didn't even watch the whole thing because it wasn't something that I took serious. Mm -hmm. And I'm not telling you whether that was right or wrong. I'm just telling you because there is a stigma around that at the moment. The other thing was there was, and like we, and we're hoping that we're supposed to get uh, Danny Sheehan on the show. And he was on Russ Colhart's show. Yeah, there, and he had a lot of stuff that he said that was just crazy. I mean, and not not crazy, but like just in in a way that it like you, it was mind blowing. A lot of the stuff that he said, and he straight yeah. up said that Sean Kirkpatrick was lying, and he said a lot of things. And he talked about how they well, or he's been promoting this New York pro or, or rally that they were having last week for UFO disclosure. Did you see any of the footage from this thing? No, I haven't. It looked like 1972 Comic Con. <laughs> there were maybe 14 people outside. Oh no! With signs, and they all looked like they were all at 1972 Comic Con. Oh boy! And this is supposed. To, I mean, I don't know if there was no marketing around it or whatever it might be. This is super important. And super, like, you know, like, to show what Schumer had done and all the support. You know, like, can you imagine if, like, thousands of people would have shown up? Then you had to put that on the news, if thousands of people. But 13 people in, like, you know, uh, small wonder shirts? It's like, <laughs> what, are you, what are we doing here? Uh, 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 like, how was it organized? How was it put together? It's just, it wasn't, because I had a few people say, oh, this rally is going to be huge. And it was, it's like, don't promote a rally if it's not going to be a rally. Yeah, it took you, a few steps back after that, I think. I, well, I, did it? Because I don't think anybody really knew about it. In the yeah, fact that it's I like, did. I just saw pictures of it because I was like, oh, how'd that rally go? And I was like, that can't be it. I'm yeah. like, I could, I could count everybody there. <laughs> I literally, you could go, oh, one, two, three, four, four, and it's like, and I'm like, no, you can't, like, that's, that's like when, before we started getting into this thing and realizing like, oh, wait, the stigma idea of what, you, who, who you think would be talking about this, you're like, it's probably like a bunch of guys, you know, in, in, in uh, science fiction shirts with ponytails doing this and that. And, and, and it's like, this is exactly what it was. And nothing yeah. against those people. They might very well be people that you want to listen to and very educated on the subject. They could all be. But it doesn't change the fact of, like, image and perception is everything. It really is. With this kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. It so, is. It is a big thing. I mean, because the minute you lose people and they and they and you cue them up to go, right, and that, it's over. It's over. You know? so, yeah. We are trying to, we are trying to be, uh, you know, ask the right questions get people support it, um, you know, and be open to, you know, it being not being what it is, uh, right. whether it's you know, something other than what we, I don't know what you might hope it may be. We have to be open to it being anything and everything. It could be Russia, it could be little green men, could be nothing. Right. You know, that's, we have to be open to every single explanation. Right. But if you I, show, if you, but if you showed somebody, like if you were like, so, so I talked to a friend um, last week, because I was curious, someone who wrote, wrote, wrote for a very prestigious newspaper, and I was talking, and I was talking to them, you know, just had them, just catching up, and and they were telling me the biggest story that they were writing about that day, and it was about um, the fact that Apple w was being sued by the government, you know, right? And yeah. I was talking to him about that, and I said, hey, I'm just curious, you guys ever like when that um, Chuck Schumer thing went down with the uh, when he was in front of Congress, basically talking about 
the UFOs and and all of that. Um, were you guys going to cover that? And, he, and he's, he laughed it off. He's like, no, no, no one ever brings that stuff up. No. And this is like this, is, and it's a very prestigious newspaper. And and I was like, what what you don't want them to do that newspaper? You don't want them to cover that rally because right. if you're like, go cover. That's honestly, if you really want it, what they should have done is what like the 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 news the news crew the people that don't want to cover the subject that's what they should have covered because if you wanted right. to get people going look at that what is what are they doing there you'd add to it but yeah. nonetheless you have Jamie Musson who is um you know is out there with these claims and he's talking about this is Ryan Ryan Graves Ryan Graves got very upset when those bodies came out because he was there to add more to what he had just done in July at, at the hearings here. So this is what Jamie Mossad said. He said, I will just, it, I will demonstrate in the coming days that you were informed about this and that your attitude is rather cowardly. Who instilled Ooh. this fear in you? Jamie Mossad says he has found footage showing Ryan Graves knowing about the Nazca, the Nazca alien mummies and that they were going to be shown at the Mexican UFO hearings. And he raised no objection to it. Um, so here is the, uh, here is that footage. Or here is that, well, the clip, I don't know, of the clip, we'll show the footage itself of Ryan Graves. All right, here's the footage. Okay. So you can do it somewhere else, or you can not do it. Uh, whatever you want. Okay, so. Do you don't want it? Do you want, no. Okay, you want to do it with him just? Do it with him? Wherever, I can do it with all the media, but I don't want to do it in front of the bodies. Okay. So I'll do it somewhere I, I else, change. but okay. I don't want to do just that. Just give me a, one second. Okay. okay, so basically... You know, Musan is is not happy that Graves kind of spoke out about it. And I got to be honest, I, I look at this footage and it doesn't seem to me it's a gotcha against Graves. It's like he just seems as much as reserved. He's trying to be polite. And he's like, uh, yeah, I'll still do my testimony, but I ain't doing it in front of those bodies. And they're like, are you, are you sure? Yeah. Well, you still want to. He's like, yeah, or I can just not do it. And they're like, no, no, no. You just do it. He's like, fine. He just doesn't because he knew it's going to be taken on as a joke. I. Yeah, this one. I mean, the way that Jamie Musson says it on, and if you if you translate it out, it basically says that he. Uh, I don't. I don't think that Graves ever is saying in particular that he's definitively taken a stance on what he thinks it is uh, flying around in the sky. He his main objective has always been protect the pilots, protect yeah. the pilots. The pilots shouldn't be. Um, ridiculed, they shouldn't be um, th like you know uh, prosecuted. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't lose their jobs. It's always been a stance. I've never heard him once definitively say what it is or isn't. Um, yeah, it just seems that Jim Assad wants so badly for these little bodies, whatever they are, to be these alien things that he's to be real to be yeah. legit. Yeah, and, and I believe that he believes it. I believe that he believes it. I really do. But yeah. I think that he, I think he's off base on this one with with Graves. I just Graves is like I don't want to be associated with this, and he said it beforehand, and he said it. He didn't he, the way Musant's saying it is he seemed like he's like oh yeah cool yeah bodies that, that's cool. It's like, he never see the, that's not there. No, no, this is this is a lot of to do. Uh, what is it? Um, a lot to do about nothing. Much to do. It yeah. really is much to do about nothing. It's it's fine. It's it's Graves has his own point of view, and you kind of said it, Christian. It's like he he's not definitively saying that these are aliens, which is like putting him in front of the bodies where he's like, no, nah, I just prefer not to do that. He's being polite. He's like, I'll do the interview, but please don't put me in front of the alien bodies. Right. Because that's not. He is saying something different, and to be like, right. ah, that there's no aha moment here. Yeah, I don't, like, so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's gonna. He's getting the. Uh, I don't think that that type of reaction that he wants is coming. Um, right. Because to yeah. me, to me, it just seems like Graves was like, "Yeah, I'll testify and I'll I'll tell you exactly what I saw, but I don't want to do it in front of the bodies." And then he was, and then he was probably what it was is he was probably pissed off about it throughout the whole entire time. And then by the time all the, you know, the hoopla came out about it afterwards, and he's just like. Oh, uh, I couldn't believe it when those things came out. I couldn't believe yeah. it. He's like, I didn't really want to even do it anymore. Well, so it's part of the TMZ doc, you know, yeah. with him being like, you know, he was not really aware of that being an integral part of the hearing. He was going in there to say his piece and that that was kind of 
you know, sprung on him when he was there. Yeah, I don't think this and does that, anything to that, That's not something he wanted, you know? It's like, yeah. unless he's in his own ship, in his own fighter pilot, and one of those things passes between him and his buddy, and one of those alien, Mexican alien bodies, and they're going, well, as if, it flies by, no. Or if they not. say, like, if, if Jamie sounds like, I have footage of you having coffee with one of those aliens while it was still alive. <laughs> Then <laughs> like, no, you don't. Th then you're like, oh, wait, we have that. If you yeah. have that, then I then I'm sorry, Ryan. I can't be on your side on this one. But that's not what this is. That's not <laughs> what this is. Um, so yeah. I think this is like you said, much to do about nothing here. Much to do about nothing. Uh, yeah. I got two more things, Riley. And we'll let you choose. Do you want to see this ring uh, above over Orange County, or should we save that for last? Um, and then we have the uh, the two actors from um, from Three Body Problem talking about aliens. Well, I want to see the ring footage. Yeah. You want to see a ring footage? Orange right, County from my own from my own hometown. All right, here. let's do that one. Here is this. There is who knows what this is, but it's interesting nonetheless. This is a um, this is some footage that was shown over Southwest Anaheim, one mile past Disneyland. This was wow. Yeah, this, this was Anaheim's my backyard. I'm in Tustin. You flip it over, you have Anaheim. This was on March 22nd at 10:40 p.m. Um, so here's here's the footage. Have you seen this yet, Riley? You, did you send it to me? I don't know. Here it is. All right. Here it is. This is this this ring. This is uh, Jimmy Corsetti who posted this. What's glowing in the sky? Maybe it's like... Oh, who knows? That could have been chemtrails. It could have been. It could have been anything. But it's like this is a big. It was kind of a big crazy circle. Or you know, taking the taking the the believers point of view, could have been the remnants of a ship that or, or whatever been. it might be that was floating around out there. So, what say you, Riley? Uh, you know, it, it it's interesting looking. Um, knowing knowing what I know about that area, Disneyland, uh, at that about that time. Uh, does their fireworks right. display and um, it looks very cloudy and and uh, you know th is there and this is me knowing nothing about how fireworks and work and whatnot remnants could it be remnants of the fireworks because when you live when I lived in the shadow of the Matterhorn for my entire life and every night around this time you can hear the fireworks from mm. Disneyland and if you and you can sometimes smell them you can sometimes right see see some of the fallout you know depending on where you are in tustin irvine anaheim orange you know it's all right around there that was the first thing that came to my mind was looking at that i go was that some maybe uh some of the fireworks fallout although it looks really weird and could you know it's again, weird i don't know what it is it, it's weird i, I don't, don't know, what you it know is. if it's it's just not moving though that's the thing it's just right. not, it's not moving it's just kind of like it's it does seem like it's just yeah. kind of like just carved into the sky like you said like whether wh whatever it might be carved into now who knows exactly what it was it just yeah. the, the footage is short enough that it doesn't nothing is solid on it nothing flies off of it so this is the kind of stuff that we continuously see with this stuff it's like well yeah. it's what is it you know it's always the what is it but it's never like well that's clearly this <laughs> and, you know it's so clearly a ufo it's just, clearly uh, something punched a hole in the crowd and the, right. the cloud above disneyland well, and I and that's why I say that as as this kind of all ties into what we've been talking about here. What I can't definitively say is that's definitely fireworks stuff. I said it could be. I said it yeah. could be a ship, a remnants of a ship thing. It could be something that punched a hole through the cloud in the same way that um, the O'Hare incident said they popped something right. through. Maybe that's what that is. I don't know. Oh, I can't well. definitively say what it is, and I can't definitively say what it isn't. And I think it is irresponsible for people to say, like, even people who are professional CGI people and all that stuff, there's one thing for them to say, this is how it could be done if it was going to mm -hmm. be done. But for people to definitively say, no, it's fake, and this is why. Yeah. I don't, I just, I, I don't know. I just can't, I can't get on board with that uh, in particular, but yeah, yeah. All right, we got one more, Riley. This is that show I was telling you about, Three Body Problem. Now, they deal with consciousness. They deal with um, Ooh, a lot of these different things that are, have quantum physics, all of it. 
So this, they asked the two of the lead actors, a guy, our boy from uh, Game of Thrones and Benedict Wong, they asked them both, and they asked them about um, aliens, and this was their answer. It makes us examine ourselves. It makes us examine our place in the universe, and therefore those big questions, who are we, why are we here? We're constantly asking questions of who are the heroes and the villains, and uh, we're, we're, we're all... We're, 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 we're all one step away from, uh, from that. And we think we're the greatest thing on Earth, so we see it with the way that we destroy our planet, we destroy the things that we are gifted. Mm. And, uh, and I think that thinking that there is a possibility something else could be very humbling and healthy for human race. It's also very um, peculiar, perhaps, that we can't see it. And uh, the, the dark forest theory is sort of uh, the way it addresses that perhaps that's because they're hiding mm -hmm. um, <laughs> disturbs me. <laughs> Even from when I read the book to now, I still find myself staring out of windows being like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked yeah. about the dark forest theory. We've talked about those things here. We've talked about when the protect Peter was on. We talked about it. Um, so it's, 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 and that was just kind of a fun thing to show because I think for people who are interested in, in this, and it, it does blend over and cross over to what we normally do on this channel with pop culture, movies, and TV, and then now bleeding into the idea and to ask questions and the same thing that the, what those actors just said. It's like the idea of the fact that we're the only things out here, the arrogance of it behind it is just too, um, it's too simple, really. Yeah, I, I love I love it when there's it, it opens up a, a conversation piece that's almost like a theme uh, for the running of the show, at least from my point of view. And that's it, it makes us question ourselves and it makes us question the bigger picture. What's past like what's up there? What is what is what's after death? What's all the questions, the, the, the mysteries of the unknown, what, however you feel. I like being able to do that. I like being able to get information that is so hard to decipher, whether it's a ring over Disneyland or Ryan Graves scene. I've seen this. I've seen something that I cannot explain because it is it is it can be humbling to think that we are not alone in this universe. And I want to believe that because of the implications of what it could do for the human race. Yeah, I, I because mean... if, if, the, if there is absolute proof that comes down in the form of a video or some some being beams down and 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 testifies before Congress, you know whatever it may be, you know I want I do want yeah. to believe. Well, it's like it's, well, it's thematically it's 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 fascinating. It's to, fascinating. To, the, the the idea of it is mind blowing, and to say no 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 it's this, or to push against it, or to just just be be a skeptic. Have a theory. That's fine. Yeah. Have it, a theory, but a, yeah. I right, look. I got my theory. I think I. I think we I got I think we got put here. I think we got how would we even know? How would you know? I think we got put here. Um yeah. And I, I mean I I go, I go back and forth. I mean there's a million different theories. I I mean there's the the matrix theory that we're that this is a simulation uh, that that we're yeah, all of it. But here. ask me how I came to that conclusion. How did you come to this conclusion? No Richard? logical reason. Yeah. I have no logical reason why. It's just maybe it's because it's something I'd think could be interesting. Is it something that with all this stuff put together, and it's also, I don't know, and you don't know. We're just so used to that time just works the way it works, and that's normal how it works. Time doesn't yeah. work like that everywhere else. I mean, hell, I just watched the thing about astronauts and gravity. It's like when they come back from space, they're in the middle, of the, and they're trying to like do, and they they start dropping pens on the floor because they think that it's going to start floating up. They're used to it in the way that right. gravity moves, in the way that time moves, in the way that space is. And there, like, there are certain way. Like, you listen to some people in the way quantum. Like, I was. It's like super fascinating. And I want a lot of this stuff to be real, and yet at the same time, I don't know. I saw some guy talk about. I can't remember who he was, but a quantum physics guy who was saying that he's convinced that in different realms there are things that the rules are different. That where you can actually, there are people that you can jump off buildings and survive. You can, you can, you know, there's certainly you that humans can fly. You can do this. It's like there's so many different realms and certainly different possibilities that we're on a different plane. Yeah. And I don't know. That sounds fun. Sounds like a good thing to write. Sounds like a fun thing to watch on Netflix. I don't know. But oh God, this world is so full of mystery right. and you, things that you cannot describe. Listen, I, my buddy Eric Bass, I, I was talking to him the day I was going into the hospital because I was freaking the F out, right. uh, knowing that I was having, you know, about to have a daughter. And he told me this story that I just blew my mind. 
and it's about and it and and because I haven't slept in in months now, it feels like. Uh, but there is this there was this little kid that literally went to his father and mother and said, "I chose you. You were you were on the beach in this pink building." And the dad went, "What?" It, it, that was where you were conceived, and he goes, "Yeah." And I, I it, it turns out it's and it's a very famous case, and I have to get the name and yeah, I forget about it. Me. But you can probably look it up. But it was like you know, this person believed that they were that they went down. They were a pilot in World War II, went down in the Pacific Ocean, and remembers that reincarnated into a kid that then came out. That's a story. An actual this kid actually went. I picked you, mom and dad. And you had me, you would conceive me in this pink hotel on the beach when they're on vacation. How do you explain that? How does this kid explain that? Right. I don't How know. It's, it's that, weird. There's tons that's of weird such a stuff. a random story. I know. It's tons of, there's, there's way more to it. And so I, much. I, there's way too, there's way more to it. I don't know. And I don't know what the answers are. But I know that, as we said time and time again, you got to keep asking questions. And I think that the importance of more hearings, more information. I do believe that there needs to be more proof than just like, well, so and so's coming out real soon, and there's going to be something here. It, like the the time it, that if you want to continue the momentum, the time is now. I mean, it really is. And I know whatever yet your plan might have been, the time is now. If you want to get this thing like moving, you got to strike while the iron is hot, and people are still asking questions. Um, you it, because eventually you're going to get to a place. Where it's gonna be like, yeah, it just it just seems like the same fifteen people saying they have this, they have that, and all fifteen of those people might be a hundred percent accurate in telling the truth. But we are in a place that if if I, unless I can show you this can is orange, if unless I can tell you it's orange, I can tell you right now, hey, this can is orange, it's orange, and you're like, well, show it to me. No, well, how do I know you have an orange can in your hand? Because I have an orange can in my hand. How I do sh- I know it's a can? Now you believe me. You know what I mean? Ask, that's the theme here. Ask questions. Yeah. Ask questions. Be open to the everybody's different interpretation of said question. Be open to what whatever it can be. And, and until you make up your own point of view or your own opinion of it, you know, I think it's uh, it, it doesn't do anybody well to say you're wrong, Christian. You have nothing behind that desk right. right there. You have nothing. Well, that's not I mean, but the thing is, Riley, as you said earlier, this social media and, and unfortunately negativity uh, causes a lot of retweets and clicks and things of that yeah. nature too. So people are going to be and and look and and preying on uh, uh, naive people also does the same thing too. So we're in a, we're in a strange place. All I know is keep asking questions, everybody. Riley, where can the people find you, my man? Uh, you can find me at Riley Around on the internet at R E I L L Y Around. See you there. And you can find me here, obviously, on this channel. But if you want more stories from the UAP phenomenon, please go and check out my channel, Down to Earth with Christian Harloff, Monday through Friday. We have a brand new news story every single day. And we hope you join us today. If you're brand new to this channel and you've never been here before, subscribe to this channel. It is so crucial. Every single Tuesday, we get more and more of you guys coming on in here, but you got to hit that button. If 50,000 of you watch, if 100,000 of you watch, and yet only 5,000 of you subscribed, how's that going to help anybody? Hit the button. Be part of it. Be part of the conversation. Let's keep getting more and more people talking. And you know what? If you're sick of the negativity the way I am, come hang out with us because this is where we want you to feel safe. This is where we want you to know whatever, whatever point of view you're on. This is where we want you to feel safe. So stay away from, from Twitter. Stay away from places that are going to scream and yell at you. Come over here and hang out with us. That's what we want. All right. Thanks for joining us here today. We appreciate you. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the Down to Earth Podcast channel. We'll see you soon.